All right, guys, we're back here doing another one of these. Uh, if those of you who follow me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever probably uh, knew that this was coming, but I got another one of these comments, so as usual, I'm going to go back through it. So this one came from the famous author, Samuel Clemens, it says, PHP is a dying language. Don't get wrapped up in web code so much you ignore the fact that the rest of the software industry, which is really big, doesn't use or care about PHP, which... Yeah, okay, what is that? I don't know what that even means or why that matters, but okay. Just like COBOL, PHP will probably always exist in some form or another, but it's hardly used if it's used at all outside of specific segments of web programming, and it's facing a lot of changes from the likes of Python, Ruby, Node, and even C Sharp. So, yeah, you guys probably pretty much know where I stand on this. So I decided this time instead of me telling you what I think, I was going to ask you what you thought. And so I had posted this over on Facebook and Twitter and so forth, and I wanted to see some of the responses from you guys. And I want to go through some of the, the better ones here. So jump over to Facebook here. And I, to me, this is this is probably the best one that I've read so far because it resonates so much with me. But from uh, Ennis, says, reading this for 25 plus years now and still waiting, LOL, which like I said here, for me, it's about 14, 15 I've been hearing it, and uh, today they're as breathless and certain as they were back then. This one from, from Jeremy says, he's quite a bit of PHP today building a $1,200 custom WordPress site for a client. Yeah, so there's uh, obviously still people out there making money. Uh, Rotimi said, I code mostly in Python these days, but PHP is super awesome. Simply not true. I don't you read read YouTube comments anymore. I need to get on that. Uh, this one from Jude says, if you're a PHP Tonian, it would be wise to start learning Node.js because JavaScript is taking over everything. Long live JavaScript. So wh one of the things I found I find funny about this is you notice how the Node people always actually reference JavaScript as if JavaScript and PHP are mutually exclusive, like Node and PHP sort of are. Uh, I always have noticed that because if you actually look at some of the statistics for node uses and so forth, they're actually <laughs> they're they're pretty abysmal. So I uh, you you find that a lot of people that uh, are node users end up referencing JavaScript as a whole. When if you actually look at some of the go on Google Trends and look up uh, look up jQuery, look up React, and look up Node in terms of the Google Trends, and you'll see that. Most of the growth in JavaScript actually is probably coming from React, uh, not Node. Uh, Node is like nothing compared to those other two. So I always find that a little bit funny. That's why I gave him the OK sign. Um, let's see. That's not true. Here in Malaysia, PHP is also a very popular language and get job very easily with good salary. That's another thing. A lot of people focus on the U.S., uh, but uh, other places, there's still a lot of, of work, and PHP is still pretty big. PHP is not a language here in the Philippines. still an in-demand job. Little knowledge is dangerous. Uh, safely say he's speaking on behalf of himself, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you sort of you sort of get the point. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, though, going back to Ennis's comment, is a lot of times you know someone could say this, like I've been reading this for 25 years, I've been I've been hearing it for 15 years, and you'd be like, okay, but do you really believe that? And so I decided to see if I could actually find uh, an older article because this used to be talked about quite a bit. And I found this one, and this one is from all the way back in 2007. And this is actually dealing with someone, I, I didn't look into him fully to see if he was a core contributor or a co-founder or whatever, but he had uh, something to do with Drupal. And here they're talking about PHP 5's adoption rate. And that's one of the things, you know, for people, people that are a little bit newer to this industry who weren't around from the transition of PHP 4 to PHP 5, like they'll comment on the transition to PHP 7, not realizing that the, the, the transition from PHP 4 to PHP 5 was so much longer and so much more labor intensive and difficult. And it was just like uh, uh, hosting providers stuck with PHP 4 for a really long time. And he talks about some of the reasons why in here. But that was one of the things that people back then were using uh, to say that PHP was dying is that the adoption rate of PHP was five was slow, but of course we went through PHP five and then on to PHP seven and the adoption rate. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers, but I would, 
I mean, just by my own use of the different servers and stuff that I've been involved with, the, the adoption rate ha- has got to be way fast. I mean, it took years and years and years uh, for for host, hosting providers to start supporting PHP 5. So, again, all the way back in 2007, that's almost over over 11 years ago now that people are talking about it. So, the other thing is a lot of times people will reference uh these indexes like the tyobi index and so forth i remember people used to just reference these a lot i don't see them coming up as much anymore probably because it's not going in their favor uh as as much but if we look on here uh we can see on here php is seventh but if you look java c c plus plus python visual basic.net c sharp these are all languages that are ge- sort of general programming languages. PHP is the first one that's sort of a web specific language. And on here, it's actually higher than JavaScript. You can see Ruby all the way down here. C sharp is up here, but it's uh, coming down while PHP is actually going up in this index faster than, than JavaScript. So, you know, that's probably why a lot of people don't mention this index anymore because it doesn't fit their narrative that PHP is dying. Now, one critique of this index is that what this does is it looks for the amount of pages in a Google search, or not a Google search, but it uses 25 uh, search engines, although if you look through it, like 15 of those are actually Google. It's YouTube, it's Google.com, and then it's all the different country variations of Google. So 15 of the 25 or 16 of the 25 are, are Google products. So it's basically looking through Google searches, and it just is tracking how many pages come up for a particular search for a programming language. And one of the critiques is, well, there may be a bunch of pages, but who's actually visiting them? Um, if they're not being visited, that doesn't necessarily make them equal. So uh, someone actually created this PYPL, uh, Popularity of Programming Languages Index, which then looks at Google Trends to see how much traffic uh, these things are actually getting, these searches and, and pages and so forth. And so now we see that in that, PHP is actually up uh, to number four in this. JavaScript is a little bit ahead of it, but not by a lot. Uh, again, looking at taking into account people say JavaScript is just exploding right now. Well, it's plus 0.1%, and sure, PHP is down 1.5% in this index. C's down, or C sharp is down. Um, let's see if we can find our Ruby. Ruby's right here, down at 1.64, so down 0.4%. Um, Oh, Go is another one people like to talk about. Clear down here. Python. I mean, is anybody surprised by that with the AI and machine learning? Okay. Python's up. Java is actually down. But this got me sort of thinking about the Google Trends. And this was the thing that ultimately I thought was the funniest out of all of this. So I, I almost made a video. I was going to make a video called The Death. Uh, well, well, I'll show you. So if we come over here, you look. This is the Google Trends data. This is since 2004. And oh my gosh, guys, look. PHP is just dropping like a fly. Like it is dying. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Like how are we going to survive? Of course, that got me a little curious. So I decided to type in uh, another one here. And so we'll just type in HTML here. And see what we get here. And wouldn't you know, oh my god, HTML is dying as well. Oh no, what are we going to do? Oh, what about, hmm, let's try this one. Java. Oh no, Java is dying too. Like, all the languages are dying. So, the point that I'm making here is that this stuff is all fine and well to look at. I mean, that's great. But a lot of people like to take these statistics and use these statistics to tell you that oh php is dying because at a certain points in time it's fit their narrative but they'll tell you to completely ignore usage statistics or other statistics that don't fit their narrative and what i'm getting at is that you can sort of manipulate this stuff however you want and at the end of the day i think somebody i i I don't think i can find it specifically over on facebook but they made a, a really great point they said look and and the guy even said that in his comment said look there's people who still you know that that know cobol and still program in cobol and actually because it's so rare and because there's not a lot of developers that do that they make they basically start off making six figures 
And so even a language like that, there's still work, there's still opportunity. And actually, because it's rare, it makes it even more lucrative of a job. So, you know, PHP in my mind is always going to be around. It's always going to, there's always going to be job opportunities there. The web sort of ebbs and flows how it does. And that doesn't mean, you know, that, that suddenly all the PHP jobs are going to dry up and nobody's going to you know, be hiring for them or whatever. In fact, it may be true that as less developers want to work in PHP, it becomes more in demand of, of a language. Um, and it actually, you know, the, 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 the pay for those sorts of job goes up, who knows, right? But, you know, if you want to learn PHP, there's still plenty of work out there, there, especially in the freelance space. It's not a dying language like everybody else likes to say. And some of this stuff with Node and some of these other things that are out there get overblown. And when you actually start digging into st some of the statistics, you start to see that they're not quite as popular as what what people try to make them out to be. So take all of that with a grain of salt. But again, I wanted to address this. I got the comment again, so I wanted to go through it. Of course, if you want to learn PHP, then I have an entire curriculum. It's like over 20 hours of PHP training from the very basics. Takes you through, you know, sessions, cookies, writing custom functions, you know, all the way into MySQL with prepared statements and PDO and MySQLi and all of that stuff. Then into object-oriented programming and teaching you all of the stuff that you want to, would want to know for object-oriented programming in PHP. And then finally into a bunch of project-based courses where uh, you can start building actual projects and so forth. We do that in the other courses, but that's where we really get heavy into a blogging application and forms and uh, a number of other things. So again, over 20 hours of PHP training waiting over there for you. The link for that is johnmorrisonline.com slash php. That'll take you to, to Skillshare where you can sign up for the two-month free trial that I can give you as a teacher. So you can uh, sign up for that trial, get access to the entire course, full access, everything uh, inside all of all, all of my courses, including the source code, plus all the other courses on the site, 21,000 plus other courses. You get access to all of it for that two months. You can take the cur curriculum, learn PHP, and whatever else you want to learn. And then just cancel any time before two months is up and you never pay a penny. So it's a really good way to uh, learn this stuff without having to pay an arm and a leg to do it. But fair warning, you know, some at some point this all becomes a little bit grindy, right? It doesn't matter, you know, how how many projects you're doing or, or you know, how funny or entertaining the instructor is. At some point when you get into hour, you know, 11 or 12 or 13, it all gets a little bit grindy. So don't go into it thinking it's going to be easy and that, you know, that, that, that it's just going to be a breeze. If it were, then more people would do this. So don't only, only do this if you're willing, really willing to buckle down, grind and put in the work, because at the end of the day, that's what it takes. That's why not everybody is a developer. That's why not everybody who tries to be a developer is successful in doing it. Because when it comes down to it, it takes persistence and it takes hard work, and only people who are willing to do that should should uh, uh, join up on this because that's what it's going to take to actually master this stuff. So if that's you, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash php. All right, guys, I'll do it for this one. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.